Carrick and Brooks is absolutely an EFL quality running back. In his career in UPenn, he finished with 36 games with 516 attempts for 2,847 yards and 26 touchdowns. He also additionally had 508 receiving yards and a touchdown during his career. Overall, the 5'11", 210 pound running back has had honourable mentions at All Ivy League. He's an Ivy League champion, second and first team All Ivy League. Third in program history with his yards, sixth in program history with his touchdowns, and second in program history with his yards per carry. Although not an elite athlete as far as RAS scores go, he is an elite football player and possesses very good game knowledge, vision, and anticipation. This season he made his European debut playing at the University of the West of England in Bristol. During the season he was part of the second most prolific offence in Bucks history. He had 30 carries for 457 yards and 7 touchdowns with an average of 15.2 yards per carry. Additionally, he also had 11 catches for 206 yards and 5 touchdowns. During his season in Newey, he was able to demonstrate his explosiveness through the gap and his ability to create space using his jump cuts. His big play ability also translates as he is able to work those jump cuts and space creation techniques to earn himself more yards. We see many times during the film that he's able to bounce outside. This is primarily where he's able to rip off these big runs. Although he also does have inside ability and his physicality and durability also contribute to this. During the season he split carries with Abel and Packer, who was good enough in his own right to deserve a video. This means in a two back system he was able to remain fresh and keep the consistency. If he is unable to create space and there are multiple defenders in the gap, he has no problem getting physical and trying to go through it. He does a really excellent job of keeping his feet moving through contact and never gives up on the play. We saw many times where he gets caught up in a line of scrimmage but managed to keep his balance and keep his feet moving in order to progress the first down. I do not have an exact number, but I know for a fact the majority of his yards would have come after contact. Especially within the 5 yard line, but averaging over 15 yards a carry, you can tell that he keeps his feet moving. During his time at Ewey, he was also very prolific in the end zone. Using the speed and explosiveness, he found the end zone many, many times. No more important than in a rivalry game against SGS in which he scored 5 touchdowns. He's also an effective contributor out of the backfield, primarily on swing passes and option plays. He would also see success in the RPO scheme, as he sells the fake off very well. There's also a massive impact from big plays. As I mentioned before, the sideline is where he really makes it happen. Many plays this season, he had over 50 yards down the left and right sideline, proving that his outside run is very capable. In combination with him always moving his feet in contact, his stiff arm was also reliably giving him an extra few yards of coverage. This means as a three down back, he's extremely valuable to most schemes. His big play ability out of the backfield, his feet always moving in contact, and his ability to catch the ball out of the backfield are an excellent combination for a three down back. He also maintained high level of productivity from the first to the fourth quarter. This is shown in many games such as Leeds in the semi-final with the Bucks and also in the final against Nottingham. There are some things that he'll need to clean up in order to perform at the next level however. That's if it's in BAFA, the British American Football Association, in the European League of Football, the GFL or even back in North America. Although his blocking technique is fine, he doesn't necessarily engage first on a defensive lineman and is hesitant to chip block sometimes. He does show evidence of chip blocking, but it's far too inconsistent. I mentioned his RAS score earlier, and I think it's also important to go into that information. He ran a 4.84 is 40, and his 20-yard split of 2.77 seconds correlated to a 1.5 score out of 10. 17 reps of the bench press and 31-inch vertical are probably standouts of his RAS. He also had a 20-yard shuttle of 4.5 seconds. He does have a high pad level when engaging behind a line of scrimmage. This can negatively affect his forward progress and ultimately lose him yards. In contact, he does drop his shoulder, but that pad level can also creep in. We've seen a few of the more experienced players in the league try and go for his knees and ankles, and I think this did have some success. Not to say that he can't lower his shoulder, because he certainly can, and he showed this on the goal line and on third and short situations. Once he is bursted out on his big plays, he's also able to be caught up from behind, as he does not have the fastest 40 yard dash, as mentioned before. During the season, he also lined up as a receiver at times. His hands are pretty good and his route running is fairly solid, but I wouldn't categorize him as a receiving back. There is also a tendency to body catch at times on swings and as a receiver. I think as far as European running backs to be compared to, I think Glenn Tonga is a pretty good one. A one-cut running back with burst, but doesn't necessarily have the breakaway speed. Overall, he could start in a lot of leagues. For his quick weaknesses, I have body catching, high pad level, and his breakaway speed at 4.84. His strengths are his red zone ability, his jump cuts and change of direction, and his yards after catch. 